right, so we're in LT Industry shop today. My buddy Lloyd, he's the one that's taking care of building the subframe for the front and the back of this thing and getting this suspension to sit right. Right now, our ride height right here at the box line, we've got it to fit at about seven inches off the ground, which is exactly where I wanted it. We've had to do a lot of trimming up underneath this fender well here, just getting the clearance we need for the wheels, which by the way, my wheels will not fit anymore. I have to buy a new set of wheels, which is fine. It kind of sucks because I figured I could use these 18s that I've had forever. They're not gonna work, whatever. We'll figure that out. But we're gonna have a closer look at this thing, show you where we're at. It's taken a lot of time to figure out steering. So the steering on this thing is actually a rack from a right-hand drive skyline that's gonna work amazing. It's the right width for this narrowed cradle in the front. Um, tie rod ends, like all these things that you know, you have to figure out because no one's ever done this before. Let's check it out. So this is the original assembly of the front cradle using the Dauberton brackets. Now we've had to trim a little bit of the excess meat on the front and the back of both sides. If you look here, this is at the back. The reason we did that is so that we didn't have to take away too much of the original frame structure of the Corvair. So this will fit up inside. We also trimmed this little section at the front. I'm a huge fan of air suspension. These struts are by Airx. I got them from Performance Suspension out of Hawaii. Um, we did have to do a little modification to the upper mounts on the Dauberton brackets because they're designed for a Ride Tech coilover, which in our case didn't fit. I mean, we originally modified that mount, drilled it out so that it would fit these neoprene bushings. Uh, we got the bushings to fit down inside the mount. We bolted up the struts. Thought it was fantastic. Man, this is really working out great. However, we couldn't get the ride height because the struts are way longer than the ride tech. So we took this mount and machined it away so that our strut could extend to its full length of travel. And we realized at that point, we're gonna have to incorporate the upper strut mount into the frame. So this is what they look like now. We've still got the mount hole there to be able to bolt this bracket to our subframe. But right here, we machined this out on the top and where the strut fits because this entire setup here squares up to the new frame that goes up inside the Corvair. Now looking up here, you can see where we have cut away the existing frame of the Corvair across here so that we could get it narrow enough to fit everything up inside. Up here is where the new subframe will ride. Um, we've had to cut a pretty damn big hole so that we had enough room. Here is our frame rails. We've got the welded bungs inside there. Um, here's the upper strut mount. Lloyd has just done a fantastic job of these. You know, you drop them in, they fit perfect. We've got all six mounting holes still available. And then our strut fits in that new upper strut mount and it sits at the correct ride height. Here's the plates to box in the original frame again. Um, just stitch welding around to ensure that everything stays straight and doesn't become brittle by overheating. Once this was all stitched up, Lloyd ground it down smooth, made everything look fantastic, everything square. So here we've got basically our frame set up now underneath of the front here is done. This little C notch here is for the rack goes through both frame rails. So the stock frame rails, if you look here, here's the inside of the passenger side. We basically had to cut part of it out to make it narrower, then weld this plate in here. This plate in turn welds to the new subframe, which is where this Dauberton performance bracket will come up and fit right under there. I'm just gonna pan down so you can see. So this piece right here now is what fits right up on here give you a close look here what it looks like on the inside so we've got those extensions of this subframe coming in here so that we have something solid to attach the roll cage to when we get to that point um basically we'll get the new wheels mounted and we'll figure out how wide to make this tub before it comes down flat again and then there'll be a little pocket underneath the seat to access the top of the strut. 
one of the crazy things or maybe unfortunate things about this whole setup is all the work and labor that's gone into putting this up the front end here no one's ever going to see it all that stuff all the the nice welding all the fabrication that lloyd has done i'm one of the very few people along with him and a couple of my buddies they're going to ever know that that's even there it is what it is once that front end's bolted up in there you'll never see it it doesn't matter how hard you look the wheel's going to completely cover everything now changing a tire on the front of this thing might be a little bit difficult because they do sit up inside this fender quite a ways, but hopefully we've allowed enough clearance. If I have to, I might have to just undo the two bolts on the bottom of the strut to allow the control arms to fall down enough to pull this wheel out. Now the back, we've got an extra four inches of fender that are gonna be hanging over the rear wheels. That's gonna be a chore to pull those wheels out of there. We might have to make an access panel out of the whole side that folds up or pins on, who knows.